All right, here we go, man. It's your boy, Brocky, Whiskey and Kicks, man. We back again. Another Sipping with Brocky segment. And it seems to get more and more special every time. How is this possible? <laughs> this is my good friend, Dr. Sophia McCarter. Did I get that right? Did I get everything right? Yeah. <laughs> What's going on? You know, nothing much. <laughs> I mean, you know, pandemic. <laughs> Right, <laughs> right, right. So for me, uh, I've been back to work since the end of May. So. Okay. All right, yeah, okay. All right, so that's interesting. So we're going to get into that in a couple of minutes. But just yeah. to let everybody know, um, this is my high school friend. We went to school together. We are from the same city. And we ended up in the same uh, area of this planet Earth somehow. Yes. After... <laughs> after some years. Many, many, a few years. A few years. <laughs> well, you, I, I embrace my age, so it's all good. You, you know, know actually, you? I mean, I look good. You, you look fantastic. I mean, I'm saying, my birthday <laughs> next weekend, I don't, you know, I'm not one of those people that I don't, I don't lie about my age. Indeed. You know, so. Indeed. So <laughs> let, me, let me ask you first, what, what are you sipping on tonight? I have um, a Chardonnay. Ooh, whoa, 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 pinkies out, pinkies out. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Sophie, you know this is not the traditional type of show you are right now. You know how I get it down, right? I know. I was like, well, what do I have? Um, you know, I have been planning. Like, I, I have all these grand plans of like, you know, I'm gonna settle in, I'm gonna relax with a nice, you know, glass of wine. I've had this chilling in my fridge for days now. I am mad at that. And so this is the perfect opportunity. This, you know, being on here with you presented the perfect opportunity for me to finally open it right, and actually right. like sip on it. So I primarily have wine. See, um, my, you know. my idea of perfect opportunity is like Monday yeah. or Wednesday. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I, I'm a lightweight, so if I if I I'm gonna go to sleep right after this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> so, so that reminds me of when we went out, me, you, and um, um, who was that with us? Tawanda? Huh? Tawanda? Tawanda. When me, you, and Tawanda went out, we went to a uh, service bar, and I took out a dish. Oh, of, you know, dish of the ceiling is closed now, where we got that gin and stuff. It's closed. Oh, no. It's closed down. But y'all was looking at me like, what the hell are you trying to do? <laughs> How? How are you still standing? Like, it's just, it wasn't, it, it wasn't, we were trying to keep up, but we just, we had to tap out. Indeed. It, it was a good time. It was a great time. It was. Uh, it I'm sleeping on a Manhattan, uh, a black walnut Manhattan. Nice. You know, nice. It's, it's classy today, right? It's one of my okay. favorites. Right. Cheers. Mm -hmm. Cheers. Cheers. So, you got to drink after cheers, right? So, um, folks, I want you to, to place your eyes on this person. Uh, on one side of your screen is a person who was going to class every day and concentrating on her studies. On the other side of the screen is the person who was skipping class all day so I could play basketball because there's a substitute teacher in gym. <laughs> <laughs> this is how it goes. So let, let's get into it. Um, you know, you are a, a home, homeopathic, right? That's how you pronounce it? It's different. I studied homeopathy, so I'm okay. a naturopathic doctor. Um, and that has several modalities within it. And so the primary tools that I use to treat people, and mm -hmm. homeopathy is one of them. Um, oh, okay. Nutrition is one of them. Counseling, physical medicine, herbal medicine. So those are my modalities. Gotcha. Uh, homeopathic practitioners they pri they primarily or only practice homeopathy which is just one of the tools that i use that i don't use that much actually mm -hmm. so you're um you know i know a lot of this stuff but i want to present this to to the people yeah. for a multitude of reasons um but your your path uh describe your path from you know leaving rochester high school going to going off to school you're, you're yeah. Well, you're not. So medicine was always like the, the thing for me. Like since I could speak, it was I'm going to be a doctor. 
Right. I, I think I might have an idea now of where that came from, but growing up, I didn't have an idea of where that came from. Uh, and so everything, you know, my extracurricular activities, you know, I played sports because of boys. <laughs> you know, my, my, my first love loved basketball, so I played basketball. Right. Um, and then it's like, ooh, all the really cute boys run track. So I'm gonna run track, you know. So me, <laughs> we be at those track meets doing nothing, basically. Right, right, right. So, so my my true extracurricular activities were all academic. Okay. And so I was introduced to this program that was held at uh, the University of Rochester and Strong Memorial Hospital called the STEP program, mm -hmm. the Science and Technology Entry Program. And I was involved in that program from the seventh grade through early uh early on in college oh wow and so from the time i was 12 i had been shadowing doctors and then being tutored wow. by you know first and second year medical students right so everything that i did was preparing me to go into you know the, into the medical field and i did not pay attention to anything else right so left home left rochester and went to clark atlanta university um and my t-shirt says uh black college dope knowledge yes, uh, so <laughs> went to Clark atlanta university and i majored in um biology and math okay and so you know very traditional sort of path in order to in order to go to medical school so you have these um internship shadowing experiences uh, you do well in school, you major in biology, yeah. at least back in the day anyway, but humanities majors did better on the MCAT, but you know, it was like major in biology. <laughs> right. So, majored in biology, but I loved math. Um, oh, okay. I had. And so I majored in that too. Nice. Uh, actually out of spite. <laughs> uh -huh. Explain, wait a minute, explain that. Because I have, a, I have a spite math story too, but I want you to explain yours. So I went to my advisor when I got to college and I was like, you know, I'm confused. I don't understand why I wasn't placed in the honors program. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, I, I did. I did. I did well. You know, I, I don't understand why I'm not in the honors program. And she said, well, you know, you know, that the kids that get us in the honors program, you know, they, they work really hard. I'm like, mm-hmm, yes. They do really well. I'm like, okay, check and check. I don't understand why yeah. I'm not there. Keep talking. All right, keep talking. Like, give me something, tell me something that I don't have. And so um, I left that meeting and it did not result in me getting into the honors program. And yeah. I got mad. So I decided I was gonna double major in mathematics and biology two fairly unrelated topics. And so like so chemistry unrelated. and math makes sense. Physics and math makes sense. Computer science and math makes sense. Biology. Biology and math don't really make a whole lot of sense. Nope. Uh, and then I proceeded to advise myself. Not a good idea. Um, so I would take a semester of biology classes and then a you semester figured. of math classes. Oh Lord, right. And then semester. So it was just, it was a whole mess. It was a whole mess. But I got both of my degrees. So I only did that because, because I was mad. I'm like, I, I can challenge right. myself. And right. I can work hard and I can do well. And so I All right, so so can I give my can I give my biology <laughs> and math stories real quick? Yes. yes. Because I'm not sure, but I I think we might have been I wonder if we were in biology together. But I took biology in tenth grade in, in high school and that teacher, I have to admit, we you know the kids, kids always say teachers are bad teachers, but this was a bad teacher, right? He was a bad teacher, but since he was bad, we just ran him up. Like we just do whatever we wanted to do. And of course I failed that class. So I had to take biology in night school, right? And fell in love with biology okay. in night school. I love, I love biology. Um, so that's my short biology story, but my, spite math story do you remember mr goldberg i think it was mr goldberg black I do. dude he taught, I do. yeah he taught yep. math so i used to skip his class all the time 
right? Now, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a smart individual. I was smart back then. I didn't have any problems with, with school. Right. You know what I'm saying? It was just attention and interest, right? I was bored with a lot of stuff. So I skipped this class a lot. And finally, he called home. And when I got home, I, I got in trouble. And they were like, you know, blah, blah, blah. You know, my dad barking on me and everything. So I'm like, uh, you know, I'm, I'm pissed at this point. And my way of getting back at him is not studying and taking his test and acing it and letting them know I didn't even study for it. <laughs> that was my, and you know, at the end of the day, I gave him exactly what he wanted to apply myself a little bit, but you know, that was, that's my mass fight story. Oh my God. A little bit, a little different, a little different, but you know, I love it. I love it. though. So I never really intended to do anything with math. I just loved it. Yeah. And I still do. Uh, and so going through, doing my thing, um, managing my schedule. And um, I, my dad got sick. And so mm. around late sophomore year, junior year, my dad got sick and got progressively ill. And his care just wasn't what I thought it should be. And my dad mm. was, you know, he was an athlete. You know, he, when I, <laughs> when I was pretending to be on the track team, he was, tra he trained me because he ran track. He raced cars. Word. Word. He played, he was, he was on the company, you know, baseball team. So he was really active right. and, um, you know, we didn't have, you know, our parents are Southerners. And so it was, you know, we typically had a garden. Um, my mom cooked all the meals. So it was just, you know, it wasn't necessarily, my dad wasn't a drinker. Yeah, he had a beer occasionally, but you know, right. he smoked, but he stopped. Right. So there were things that didn't quite add up to me about like how pro how quickly his his illnesses progressed, mm -hmm. and there was a period of time when my dad just started fainting, and oh, nobody wow. could figure out why. He was on fourteen different medications. Wow! And he would just collapse. And finally, finally, someone looked at the list of medications and was like, "Oh, he should not have been prescribed this one with this one." Right. And Conflict. His blood pressure to drop too much. That's why he's fainting. Wow. And I was so angry. I was just so angry about uh, how he was treated, how long it took someone to figure that out. Mm -hmm. There was no coordination of his care. And at that, I, but I didn't know anything else. I'm like, I have no idea. Everything that I've done has prepared me to go to medical school. I don't know what else I'm going to do, but I don't think I can do that. I can't practice medicine in that way. Oh, dope. Right, right. I get it. So I wanted to be a pediatrician because I've always loved kids. Mm -hmm. And so I'm like, well, how can I continue to work with kids? And I was like, well, I have this other degree. And really biology was just because I thought that that was what I had to do. That had been drilled in me. And I think in that, at that time it was drilled that if you want to go to medical school, major in biology. But I really didn't have interest in it in that way. I really loved math. And so I had no intention of doing anything with biology, but using it as a tool to get to medical school. Right. Um, so I decided that I was going to pursue a career in mathematics and I wanted to get my PhD in math is what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I was like, well, I'm, I'm going to teach. I'm going to dedicate my life to teaching children and making them fall in love with math. <laughs> and um, got into teaching. And so I've taught at various levels. I was a preschool teacher. I was a kindergarten teacher. I did middle school. I did high school for a summer. Uh, and I realized that was not the way that I was supposed to spend time with children. That wasn't how I was supposed to impact their lives. Right. I was supposed to be doing something else. And a friend of mine, a good uh, sister friend of mine, um, you know, was like, you know, what are you going to do? You know, why haven't you gone to medical? Why haven't you applied? What are you doing? I thought you were going to medical school. And she would ask me that periodically. And then I would always say, no, I'm taking this other path. Mm -hmm. And I had started a master's degree in secondary mathematics education. And, uh, she gave me this brochure and it was a brochure about naturopathic medicine mm -hmm. and I had never heard of it. And I was like, well, all this time I've spent literally my entire life dealing with medicine in some capacity and I've never heard of this. This is odd. So I looked into it and I'm skipping over some stuff, but I looked into it and I, I was very interested because it was how I lived my life anyway. It right. was how, how I grew up. And the focus on prevention and using natural therapies with fewer side effects was very appealing to me. 
And so I began to research it for about three years. I compared the curriculum of, you know, nat naturopathic medical school to conventional mm -hmm. medical school, side by side comparison of all the classes to make sure that my education was going to be legit because this wasn't something that I had heard of before. Right. I was satisfied with what I found out. I called the school all the time. Um, whenever they were doing recruiting events, I would go and talk to the naturopathic doctors that were doing some of the recruiting. And, um, but the school that I was looking at, the two schools that I was looking at, one was in Arizona, one was in Seattle. And okay. I'm like, yeah, I don't really want to go to either one of those places. Right. Um, but and I was I was a middle school math teacher at the time. And you're in that in a, you're still in Atlanta. Did you? I was in Atlanta, Atlanta at this time. Okay. Yep, I was a middle school math teacher, and I um I I decided to apply like to sort of bite the bullet and apply, yeah. and I ended up applying to the school in Seattle or just north of Seattle. Mm -hmm. And went out there, and it was beautiful. It was sunny. It wasn't raining. Tricked me. Uh, <laughs> yeah. The school was beautiful. It was everything, you know, everything that I experienced while I was there was everything that I thought it was going to be. Yeah. And that was a wrap for me. Mm -hmm. I applied, I got accepted. And later on that year, basically, I was, I was moving across the country. That's insane, yo. That's the yeah. That's, you know, that's, that's bold, and especially coming from a place like Rochester, where a lot of people don't even leave the west side or the east side. Right. You know, so to 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 um go out like you know my niece is in the navy right now so i'm so proud of her because yeah. she left and she's like you know experiencing life she's you know philippines and this place and that place and skydiving and yeah right. so that, that's dope that you went out there you know first to atlanta but to go across the country to get a different experience is pretty uh pretty heavy it was um i didn't know anyone i had never been to the west coast and so i went out there and i had you know friends of friends or the family of friends that I could connect with in case I needed something. But it was really a blank slate for me. Um, right. And so that was an interesting experience. And I moved from Atlanta, hot Atlanta. Right. <laughs> I was in Atlanta in the 90s, so like 90s Atlanta. If y'all know about Atlanta, like 90s Atlanta. <laughs> when Freaknik was still happening. When Freaknik was still happening, and they brought it back. Right, right. <laughs> So I left like '90s Atlanta and went to Seattle. Yeah. Wow! Right. So that's a whole other episode because I know some of the stuff you went through out there. Yeah. Uh, to to kind of and, and I'm not gonna you know you can talk about whatever you yeah. want to, but it kind of pushed you. I think I would assume towards. Did it kind of help gear your mentality to help the black community more Absolutely. by being out there? Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, naturopathic medicine, this is not something that is uncommon to us. Like, I always say this is a medicine of the people. Right. So growing up, there were things that my mom did that she learned that I was now learning the science of. Uh -huh. Like, oh, that's why you did this or did that. That's why you made us go outside. She's like, you know, go outside and get some fresh air and sunshine. We yeah. could not just sit in the house all day. You know, we got really excited with Atari, with Nintendo. She's like, no, go outside, get some fresh air, exercise. Uh, you know, so those foundational things with regard to health. Yep. Don't eat too much sugar. That did that message never kind of quite got to me, but <laughs> don't eat too much sugar. Right. <laughs> the best you need to eat. You know, you need to eat well. Don't you know, we didn't eat out very much. Like we would go out to dinner as a family, but my mom cooked every day. She was Same thing. Same most part stay at home mom. And so, right. you know, it was just like home cooking. It wasn't all this, you know, like processed food unless I was getting it after school or something like that, you know, kind of like sneaking it. But at home, that just wasn't what was going on. And so getting to medical school and learning these things and understanding like the importance of being in the sun, the importance of being in nature, the importance of diet, the importance of fasting, uh, the health benefits of fasting. My mom would do that periodically. Um, the importance of detoxing and cleansing. That was something that, you know, she put us through as well. She's like, it's time. She called it our working in medicine. Yeah. <laughs> and so we did that periodically. So we weren't sick. I was obsessed with, I, I had such a strong desire to go to the hospital and to like have a broken bone of some kind. Oh, that's I crazy. I always wanted to just like be in the hospital. Right. And we just weren't sickly kids. Like right. 
ever. <laughs> I, you know, and I'm a, I'll share this because I haven't told anybody, but and not because I'm ashamed, but because you can't relate. A lot of people can't relate to my my brain waves and the way I think sometimes. But I had this random thought, like I thought to myself, how often does my actual body touch the earth? Yes. You know yes. what I mean? And 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 is there benefits to it? Like I don't know, but I just kind of thought about that one day. Like I don't know the last time my actual feet touched the earth. Yeah. I mean, isn't the thing is there are numerous studies about like going like actually going and going outside and actually allowing your flesh to touch the earth. Wow. If you look up forest bathing, you know, it's this this whole, you know, field that people, you know, they wow. people took classes on this. Um, and the beneficial effects that it can have, um, you know, just on health, on well-being, on mental health. <clears throat> so it's incredibly important. Um, and that was one of the really beautiful things. Like my, the school that I went to was in the middle of a state park. It was surrounded by nothing but trees. And so we could go hiking. We could go down to Lake Washington. We had this big, beautiful garden in the back. We just go out there and pick herbs and just eat them. You know, and just, it was just, they're like teaching y'all to be hippies. Pretty much. It was really like, it was like Hogwarts, you know, for, you know, (laughs) natural health practitioners. Um, So, you know, learning, learning the science behind these things that were familiar to me. And what I'm finding being in practice is that these are things that are familiar to my patients as well. Like black and brown people, you know, utilizing um, you know, herbs and, and uh, for, for medicinal purposes, like that is something that we do. That is a part of our culture. That's a part of our history. Right. So the, it felt, naturopathic medicine has always felt very familiar to me. Um, and so that was my draw. And I always wanted to, I would say, spread the gospel of naturopathic medicine, but particularly bring that back to black and brown people. Like we, you know, there are things that that we can do. We have a, a great amount of control over our health, much more than I think that we realize. Right. Um, and it has a lot to do with some of the things that we do, mm-hmm. um, the things that we, that we feed ourselves, both you know, physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually. Yep. Um, and naturopathic medicine looks at all of that through the principles of naturopathic medicine. It looks at all of that and reestablishes this connection between the body, mind, and spirit. So all of that felt very authentic to me. Mm-hmm. And I loved that it was formalized and it's an entire profession and that I get to do that every day. Right. So, yeah, and not something that you had to go sneak off to learn or... Right. Or, you know, so... Um, okay, so oh, that's interesting. So, and I want to get back to the whole Black health thing because I want to yeah. get into that. But I want to ask you this quick question. Is there a um, conflict between the traditional way of practicing, which includes medicine, prescription drugs, and things of that nature, and what you do? No, they actually complement one another very well. And so my naturopathic medicine, the, 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 the profession, the kind of doctor that I am is unfortunately not licensed in every state. Mm-hmm. So I'm licensed here in Maryland. My scope of practice and what I can do is drastically different than what I was able to do in Washington State. So in Washington State, you could choose me to be your primary care doctor, or you could choose a traditionally trained or conventionally trained physician to be your primary care doctor. I could prescribe your medications and manage your medications, um, you know, whatever, you know, injections and right. you know, other kinds of therapies that involved injections, I could do all of those things. I was, and also covered by insurance as well. Oh, okay. Here in the state of Maryland, I don't have prescriptive rights. I'm not covered, my services as an naturopathic doctor are not covered by insurance. My services as an acupuncturist are covered by insurance, but not naturopathic medicine. So to Mm. see me, you have to pay out of pocket. That's very expensive. And that is an issue across the board. Like the the accessibility of natural therapies, um, it it, it tends to exclude black and brown people. Right. Um, and so one of the things that I saw while I was in school and many of my classmates, regardless of the school that they went to, we primarily saw middle-aged white women. Like that's who we saw 
all the time. Like I went through two programs, a total of nine years in graduate, you know, graduate education. And I can literally count on my hands the number of black and brown people that I saw as a super clinician. When you're out west. When I was out west. Wow. So that changed when I started working further south in Washington. Oh, okay. Um, but even, you know, and then people would seek me out because there's not a lot of me, you know, black women, black people in the natural health realm. So, you know, we are underrepresented in nature. We're underrepresented in medicine in general. Mm -hmm. uh, we are underrepresented in the natural health sciences as well. So when people meet me, they're like, I don't, I have, they, I've been called a unicorn several times because they've never met a black female naturopathic doctor. They've never met a black female acupuncturist and I'm both. And they're just like, how, you know? So I had people when I was in Washington seeking me out specifically, they're yeah. like, you're a black woman and you do this and I'm going to come and see, you know, I'm going to come and see you. Is that, do you think that's because there's a ceiling there, uh, you know, that the typical invisible ceiling there in regards to black women or blacks in general in that field or a lack of interest in our community to do that type of thing? I think it's a combination of all of those things. And this is a highly entrepreneurial field. And so the vast majority of folks are going out and they're starting their own business and that's challenging. Yes, it is. Um, and so I think that the earning potential can be a challenge. Like there are naturopathic doctors that do incredibly well. <laughs> so it's not like you out here, you know, broke. Um, but it's not like that of a cardiothoracic surgeon. I'm not making that kind of money. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, right. that's, that's not yeah. happening. I mean, like uh, you said, insurance a lot of times not covering. So a lot of yeah. people will go the other path because they yeah. want their insurance to cover. Yeah. And that's a, that's a level of access. Right. And so if you can pay a $25 copay versus, you know, for an hour with a, with a doctor versus a couple of hundred with me for an hour, even though you're very interested in what I do and you believe that um, a more natural approach to whatever ails you is, right. um, is, would be beneficial to you, you're probably going to use your copay. Mm -hmm. And that makes sense to me. Mm -hmm. So there's a, there's a lack of, there's a lack of access. Um, I think the, 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 the financial burden, you know, it, I, the, my school is, was not, my education was not cheap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no doubt. Not cheap. <laughs> I bet. Uh, and so I think that that, so that, and then coming out and the job opportunities being very different. You know, mm -hmm. so we're not typically in hospitals. We are in small private clinics. That's where I am right now. I'm in a small private clinic. Right, right. So those kinds of things contribute to you know, fewer and fewer black and brown people coming into the profession. Right. There are fewer of, fewer of us in the profession. There are fewer of, fewer of us representing the profession, going out and doing outreach. Right. And so we don't know about it. We don't learn about it. Um, and so it's a combination of all of those things. And so a part of one of, one of the, one of my roles when I was in Seattle was doing recruiting. So going to speak to student organizations, going to graduate fairs, going to med school fairs saying, Hey, there, there's a, there's another option out here. You can study this. And so many people were interested in it. They just right. had never heard of it. Right. Ever. And, and who better? I mean, I, I thought about this before we did, you know, before we um, did this. And I was like, you know, you're quite the orator. You know, like you're, you're really good at that. You know what I mean? So who better to go out and talk to the kids and, you know, and, and these young, these young adults really yeah. and, and about what, you know, what they could be doing and, and what's out there. Yeah. It, yeah. I mean, it's, it's great. It's incredibly fulfilling. Like I love everything about what I do. Um, that, so that's thing. Yes. And so it's, it's never a case where, you know, I'm like dreading going to work and I don't, I have wonderful patients. Um, I enjoy, we laugh, we joke, you know, they, I'm told time, I, I'm able to give them something that they're not getting. Right. Right. You know, when they go and they see, because I spend more time with them and that's the, that's just the case overall for naturopathic doctors. We spend more time with our patients. And right. so we can actually have a conversation with them. And you're having a relationship with the, with the yeah. 
So, um, all right. So, you know, these, these Zoom things like 45 minutes, right? So we yeah. have about 15 more minutes. And, you know, we could talk for a few hours. You know that. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> but my last two topics, I kind of want to tie them in together um, with what you're doing, the community work you're doing through your practice to help yeah. the black and brown community and why the black and brown community needs that help. Uh, America. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> yep. You know, it, it's this is just not uh, the, the constant onslaught of discrimination, racism, mm -hmm. lack of opportunity, the historical trauma that we carry in our bodies and we yeah. pass on to our children, a whole field of study. If we look at ACEs or adverse childhood experiences, that is a whole thing. If we look at epigenetics, that is a whole thing. So the trauma that I have experienced will impact my grandchildren, potentially my great-grandchildren. And but there is something that can be done about that. You know, if when 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 folks are cared for, when they can be uh, when they can be encouraged to move from that constant fight or flight um, uh, way, way of existing to a more calm, you know, way of existing. Yeah, that can that can counteract what happens at a genetic level. Um, to us, those changes that occur as a result of chronic stress. Right. So I think it's important to create those spaces, to create those safe spaces, those healing spaces, specifically for black and brown people. Uh, and that really came to a head for me, uh, being able to do this work here. Um, I wanted to get plugged into the community in some kind of way. I also wanted to give back because that was something that was very important to me. Mm -hmm. And I felt incredibly helpless during the pandemic and dealing with, you know, again and again, you know, George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, Ahmaud Arbery, again and again and again and again and again. And I, you know, like, what can I do? So right before the, pan, you know, the pandemic started, I had started um, engaging in conversations with actually some of my patients and asking them, uh, getting to know them a little bit more and finding out that many of them were working in activist spaces. Many of them were working with at-risk youth, um, working with black and brown, you know, working in organizations that supported black and brown people. Yeah. And through these conversations, I began to share what I wanted to do. I said, you know, I really want to introduce black and brown people, black and brown youth to natural medicine, to acupuncture. A great friend of mine is an herbalist and a nutritionist. And so we had a whole plan of how we we're going to bring small groups of people into the clinic and do, you know, I would give them acupuncture. We talk about herbs, we talk about nutrition, we talk about natural medicine and, you know, fairly simple things that you could do to better your health and, 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 and well-being. And I had made these connections and you know, we, were, we were really set to start and then the world fell apart. Um, and so, because everything you know started happening uh i started thinking about that again and recognizing the my own need for support and mm -hmm. other black and brown folks need for support uh i said well mm, what can i do like how can i give back i felt really helpless and was wondering how i could give back and i i don't have the uh my my vision of what it's like to protest and my, the way my anger is set up. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Somebody's gonna point in my face one time and say something to me one time and then, you know. Right. So I had this vision of that. And that's what I learned by talking to some activists and talking to practitioners that were medics or our medics. They're like, oh, you know, that's not what happens you know that's not always what happens and it's very organized so i got a whole schooling you know on on that and i said well i still don't think i'm ready for that i don't i again with the way my anger is set up i cannot see other people being harmed and not do anything right so what can i use 
Um, and how can I provide some kind of service, some kind of comfort and support for people using the skills that I have? And I'm like, well, I can acupuncture. Acu I can do that anywhere. I can do that on anyone. And right. if folks are willing to come, then I just want to give it. I just want to do it. Mm -hmm. um, and so I started Soulful Sundays. And uh, that happens on the first and third Sundays at the clinic where I work. And it's a, a healing, safe space for Black and Brown people. You come in, you get acupuncture. You give a donation, and um, once I collect, you know, enough money, then that money is being donated to organizations that support Black and Brown people. Yeah. And I am very clear that I don't want any money for this. It's very important to me to give away my services in that way. Um, and so it's been rolling. Um, I started it in August, and more and more folks are coming, and they're bringing people with them, and it. It fills me with absolute joy that folks are coming in and they're taking advantage of it. And some folks are getting acupuncture for the very first time. That and I so, love that. That's so dope. Like, I, I get chills just hearing stuff like that. I, mean, I love that so much. I, I'm so proud of you um, just for finding a way, you know what I mean? To yeah. first finding a way to do what you love and doing what you love and to help people. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, it's just a beautiful thing. It's such a great feeling to help people. And it is. I just, um, no, you know, I, I just like, I, I'm, I'm happy to have, to be associated with people who <laughs> like to help people as much, if not even more than I do. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. So that's dope, man. That, that's great. So what's your, um, what's your clinic, the name of the clinic? clinic and everything um it's called pulse community care so pulse says and you're feeling your pulse community care and it's in downtown silver spring 912 thayer avenue suite 105 okay and you guys do you guys have uh social media at all or no yep pulse community care okay. on facebook and instagram dope and uh and it's been it's been going pretty well it has been going well um so i have some folks basically some regulars they come every sunday uh, every every Sunday that this is happening, they come and they bring someone with them, and then that person brings someone with them. Um, I had someone come, you know, like people are actually like traveling, you know, a great distance um, mm -hmm. to come, and so that's also you know just dope, you know, and they're like spreading the word. Mm -hmm. uh, everyone, you know, like everybody, you know, I, I have white patients. They're like, it's so wonderful that you're doing that. It's so great that you're doing that. I'm going to tell the people that I know, um, you know, I work with black and brown folks and I'm going to, I'm going to spread the word to them. I'm like, great. Thank you. So there is so much support around, you know, this particular venture and the clinic is owned by um, two women of color um, who their contribution to this is providing the space, the linens, the materials. Okay. Um, so that's their contribution to this effort. Right. Um, yeah. I'm sorry. And and so do when the patients come, do they come? Do they? Uh, I assume they set up. Do they set up appointments, or is this kind of like first come first serve kind of thing? Actually, they schedule an appointment. And uh, do you treat particular ailments, like if someone has you no know, condition, my back hurts, or whatever. Do you? They have to let you know that, or they get treated for certain things, or is it kind of like a general? This is wellness. general wellness, general, general relaxation. And, but the points had, you know, the, each, each acupuncture point has a, a number of different functions. Right. Um, so while the focus of each treatment is general wellness and relaxation and, you know, calming the mind and helping you to adapt to stress, right. um, there, you know, because these, these, these acupuncture points have multiple purposes, multiple functions, they can also be helpful. You know, there's a whole treatment that just clears energy that involves a points on the back. So right. if you have back pain, you're getting both done right. at the same time, Listen, uh, primarily. I could attest people like, look, you know, <laughs> Sabi, she, she performed acupuncture on me. I had needles in my ears, y'all. I was like, this is not bad. <laughs> This is all right. Yes, yes. I have a little whiskey after this, but still, it's good. I like and it. That's okay. And that's okay. That's <laughs> dope, man. I, like I said, um, you know, it's just another example of how you can be a dope 
person. It's not just about one thing or the other. It's like you're doing dope things, and I, um, I'm happy. I'm proud of you, um, and I, you know I'm in full support. So hopefully, you know this message gets out to the people. You know people who follow Whiskey and Kicks at least, and and they can see what's going on in their own community, or if they live in a different area, they can say they can get inspired by it maybe and start yeah. off something similar. Absolutely, and uh, you know I'm a part of a. Uh, we're launching uh, Black Acupuncturists uh, Association, and so it's a directory of all Black acupuncturists, you know, in the United States and abroad. Um, and so, if, you know, many folks are looking for practitioners that, that look like them, mm -hmm. uh, and specifically looking for practitioners in the natural health realm that look like them. Oh. And so, you know, Indies of Color on Facebook um, is a place to go. Uh, Black Acupuncturist Association, blackacupuncturist.com is a place to go to find a Black acupuncturist. Um, if, so I think it's if people important. have questions, can they reach out to you? Sure. So, you know, Dr. Safia ND on Facebook and Instagram. Folks are, you know, messaging me all the time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now that I'm actually, like, out here on social media, because this is new. This is what the pandemic brought. So now I'm doing lives you know, that. Thursday. That. Right, you know, and so I'm out here and continuing to, um, you know, connect with people and reach people. So folks are, you know, sending me messages and, um, you know, asking questions and things like that or wanting to set up appointments. And so they do. And you're doing like, um, you're doing like some uh, weekly Facebook Live kind of thing too, right? I am. I am. And that is uh, highlighting black and brown NDs, you know, black and brown nature valley doctors. Um, you know, I felt that it was important to get our voices out there. And so I sent a, a, a Facebook message to some of my friends, like, hey, y'all, I've seen groups of conventional docs. I've seen groups of nutritionists. I've seen groups of all professions getting on and talking about COVID and all the things related to COVID. We should get on and talk about this, you know, as naturopathic doctors and, you know, get our, lend our voices, add our voices to this conversation as well as other things. And so they said, sure, let's do it. And they jumped on with me and then uh, it was recommended to me, like, yeah, you should do this every week. And I'm like, every week, every week? It's a commitment, it's a commitment. Uh, right, <laughs> but it, it, it's been going um, and it's been, it, it's been great. I've been nervous about getting, I'm a behind the scenes kind of person. Right. And so being out in front like this and being um, you know, on, on Facebook Live and you know, in other places has been very new for Na me. You're natural, yo. <laughs> it's a beautiful thing. You're killing it. But it's been great. It's been great. So yeah, every Thursday I'm doing a Facebook Live. I'm being interviewed by um, Mike for his show. I saw that. I saw, I saw that like a couple hours ago. I was like, first, first, <laughs> first. Oh God, I'm, I'm gonna let you and Mike deal with that. That's um, my man. Yeah, that's my yeah. man. That's my man. So uh, that's going to be my Facebook Live tomorrow, um, and so he'll be asking me some questions and, and things like that. And so it'll be great for people to tune in to uh, learn more, you know, about naturopathic medicine, more about acupuncture, and you know how it can you know benefit them. So that's happening tomorrow, and then yeah, so every Thursday, and then I get invited to do things like this, and you know. Had to. Yes. And you know, um, I was just on Mike's show recently. Yes. A yes. Weeks or so ago, and I don't know if you got to watch or not, but you came up during the episode. And okay. it, was dope. it was dope because Mike um, went to school for y'all watching. He went to high school with us, yep. but his family moved to Florida. I think it was Florida, right? Yeah. His family moved to Florida. I think he was maybe 10th grade or something like that. And when he was down there, he told me that he said on the show that he was really depressed um, and, you know, just like really, really depressed and not in a good space. And he said one person who reached out to him, he received, I think, a letter from you. And he said that that letter, he was genuine. He said it, it helped him. He said it, he was like, I don't know. He was like, I don't know if it saved my life or not. He said, but it really helped him through a hard time. So that's just a testament to to you as a person, and you've always been a great person, a sweet person, a beautiful person inside and out. I appreciate you, and uh, hopefully the people will too. Oh, thank you so much. Indeed, indeed. So, and tell Mike I said what's up when you do a show tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> well, you already <laughs> did with your kicks. 
<laughs> Sabi, I'll talk to you soon, man. We got to get together and sip on something soon. Yes. That, I know, that I know happen. has us hibernating in our own areas. I know you're right. back to work. I'm working, but I'm working from my couch. But you know, and you all and you all the way out in the country. So. I gotta get, a, gotta get an airplane ticket to come down the wall door sometime. <laughs> right, exactly. That's what I'm gonna need to do. <laughs> right, hey, I appreciate you. I th I thank you for being on the show, and um, I'll talk to you real soon. Thanks so much for having me. Indeed. I appreciate it. All right, now. All right. Have a good night. You too. Later. Thank you.